Hey, this is Seth with In Demand Career. I show people how to get jobs in digital marketing with no previous experience or education. And that includes my very special guest today who has a very unique story, Kayla, who was actually working on her PhD and very unhappy with that and then transitioned into a career in digital marketing, which she is much, much happier with. Thank you so much for being here, Kayla. Thank you for having me, Seth. I appreciate it. Awesome. So let's start where, with where you are right now, and let's talk about your current job and the job that you just got that you're going to be starting in January. So tell me about your current, your current position. Sure. My current position is a Google Analytics specialist with a bank in Missouri. Uh, I also do implementations for tracking for Google Tag Manager. So when people see those ads, follow them around on social media and CNN and Yahoo, that's me that's doing the implementations for that. So, Awesome. And what are you getting paid at your current job? My f- current job, I started at 40000 and then they gave me a increase to $41,240. Okay, cool. And this was your first job. This is great for an entry level job. And now why don't you tell people about the job you just got that you're going to be starting in January? So the job that I just landed uh, will start January 2021 is at AdSwerve. Uh, It's a company that I found out about through your channel, actually, through one of your digital marketing walkthroughs. And I'll be doing the same thing that I'm doing currently at my bank employer, but this time for a larger portfolio of banks. Awesome. And how much are you getting paid at this job? The base salary is $55,000, and then it's up to $22,000 in bonuses. That's pretty remarkable with just, what do you have, about a year's worth of experience? Uh, Exactly 11 months. (laughs) Okay. 11 months of experience, she went from making $40,000 to $55,000, plus the potential to make uh, over $70,000 with bonuses. And, And another key feature of this job is, do you have to go into the office for this new job? No, this one is fully remote. Very happy. Let's walk you back to the beginning. You're in the science field. You're working on your PhD or one of these things. And so how did you get interested in or how did you start getting into digital marketing? Okay. So April 2016, uh, we did a business pitch competition. It was four or five PhD friends and myself. It was for a graphic novel um, that was to teach diversity in STEM. So one of the things that I was always curious about was I rarely ever saw other people that look like me in STEM or whoever, who, who even had experiences like mine, right? I went to undergrad in Mississippi. Um, My master's advisor told me that there were no black scientists, like ever. Uh, If you look at the history of science, that's not true, right? So what I was always trying to do, I think in my mind was prove other people wrong instead of ever just following what gave me joy. So that was like my science experience. Um, And I remember finishing my master's. It was a traumatic experience with that advisor and telling my mom I didn't want to do the PhD. And my mother, again, baby boomer, master's degree, social worker by trade. And then she spent about six or seven years doing career counseling, sending people to college. She was like you're going to go do this PhD. You already told them that you were coming. And I was like, people back out of stuff all the time. Not, not us. We don't back out. We don't back down from a challenge. And I'm like, Oh God. So I started the PhD and I didn't want to do it. So my friends convinced me to do this business pitch. I came up with the concept. I contracted two artists to come up with like different drawings for characters for the preliminary contest. I enlisted one of my cousins to help us do a budget. She's an accountant. See all the like project management and putting all the pieces together. I found a web designer from a Janelle Monet fan group that I was in who put together the website for us. Um, the long-term artist that we had to develop these sketches. I actually sat next to him at a friend's PhD graduation party and just struck up a conversation like, what do you do? And he's like, uh, I'm the oddball here. I'm the only person here that's not in science. And I was like, perfect. I hate science. I don't want to talk about it. Let's talk about you. <laughs> so we start talking about his drawings. 
Um, and so he did the artwork for the official um, product. Well, we won second place. When it came down to it, they said the only difference between first place and second place was the first place kids had competed for three years and never placed. Okay. You all were just way too good, you know, mm -hmm. but they felt like because of our PhD status, we I guess maybe we had an unfair advantage. I don't know. But I was thinking to myself, I've never done a business business pitch before. Like I, all this stuff just came to me. And so my friend said, this is the most life we've ever seen you have. You're in year what? two or three of the PhD, you should go do this. And I'll be, you know, 100% transparent. I talked to my therapist about it. She didn't want me to leave grad school, but she told me to talk to her husband. And her husband was uh, retired from Wall Street as a capital uh, venture capitalist. We met. He said that the project was amazing. He said that he'd seen something similar, not quite the style what I was talking about or the approach and he encouraged me to quit graduate school and he was like the quickest way to learn business and marketing is to go do it I think you should do that and I was like okay Sweet. that's how I got into <laughs> digital marketing that took me through getting your first job so I found your course I purchased it and this was back when I had no money so I put it on a credit card and I was a skeptic I went through all the videos. I went through, you know, the courses that you suggested that we purchase. And I was like, this really can't be real. Like, it cannot be this easy. I've gone through as, you know, what I've gone through as far as academics goes. Um, and I'm still at the point where my advisors told me I wasn't ready for a job. Once you took action and took my course, what happened? I went on, I went on Indeed and I saw the job that I have now. And I said, wow, that job looks like a total scam. I can do all of that stuff. Like after I just went back to the basics of what I could do, it's like, I could do that. This is too good to be true. So I applied, wrote the personal cover letter, right? Using your format, talked about all the things I'd done, A-B testing, blah, 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 as it related to that job description. And my current boss called me that night. And she said, hi, is this Kayla? And I said, yes, it is. And she said, this is such and such from the bank. And I was like, literally, I just froze. And then I remembered, <laughs> okay, you've already frozen during how many interviews at this point? Get it together. This is the moment. This is it. If we're getting any job, we're getting this job. We only need one yes. And set up an interview for, I think it was the following week because it was like over Thanksgiving break. And all of the questions she asked were literally like your course. Yeah. Awesome. So that's how I got the job. <laughs> and then how, what was it like getting hired there at the time? Super exciting. Um, unbelievable. Uh, I actually found a place to live on the same street as the job. So even though I moved here late December, early January, I was in Pennsylvania uh, coming to Missouri, I was like, oh, it's warm outside. So I walked to work every day and everybody mm -hmm. thought I was crazy. And I'm like, this is amazing. Like, <laughs> this is the life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Unlimited coffee, unlimited tea. They have food days. I mean, there's a 24 hour gym. Well, before COVID. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And you were so, making, yeah. um, and how much are you making at this first job again? 40,000. 40,000. And what were you making when you were as a PhD or as a grad, grad student? <laughs> like 16, 17,000. <laughs> it's, it's, it's terrible. It's Just terrible. debt on debt on debt. Yeah. Right. And my mom's so, like, you could have lived on that. Not in Pennsylvania where your rent is like $800. No. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> you doubled your salary from yeah. your terrible grad school PhD yeah. salary. And you were very, very happy at that job. And it sounds like it was a wonderful first, uh, first job to have. And you liked it a lot. Just, you know, they just mm -hmm. didn't, weren't able to accommodate the uh, things you need. And you've been, and then, it, you know, it only took you 11 months to get this new job making right. around 60 K, which is what yeah. I promise. And I love that. I yeah. love the numbers. I would say yeah. 60 K in a year. And you yeah, you do say that. Yeah. Being able to work remotely, uh, you told me it's very important to you. Why is it so important to you to be able to work remotely regarding your family and your grandma and everything? 
Well, my grandmother's aging. She's almost 90. Um, she does have dementia. And so I've been going every weekend uh, to spend time with her. And then the pandemic hit. So it complicated things, right? I initially took two months where I didn't go home because no one knew like how things were transmitted. And then I decided, okay, well, if we're working from home, then maybe I can go to my boss and say, well, can I get some time to you know, work remotely where I can make sure my grandmother's safe, things like that. Right. But what happened instead at this current job? Instead, my boss declined my <laughs> my offer um, and said essentially that I hadn't earned the opportunity to be remote. Right. So this is really interesting, guys. You know, I, and Kayla was telling me she's in a state in a situation where they're not you know, taking it that seriously, even though cases are spiking and she doesn't want to put her grandma at risk. I don't want to get into a whole thing about that. But the, the, the issue here for everybody watching is, you know, this, the experience at work where you feel like you don't have options. You feel like you're stuck. Oh, my boss said this. I can't do that. I'm stuck. This is where my money comes from. I have no options. What excites me is the fact that Kayla was able to take her skill set and get this new job. So tell people about your experience in terms of, so, you know, what happened? <laughs> I remembered what a lot of people in your testimonial said that, you know, after you get like that six to nine months or so of experience, really you can make your own decisions as far as your career. Absolutely. And so tell us what happened. So I went back through one of your walkthrough videos and within the first few minutes, I think you went to, you were in like Iowa or something like this doing a walkthrough on LinkedIn. And I was like, that's right. So I activated my free LinkedIn premium trial I started searching for any kind of job related to Google Analytics or Google Tag Manager since that's what I had the most experience in. Um, I started doing a write-up of all of the SEO things that I'd done using the analytics inside of Google Analytics. And I also started looking back through my notes for Google Tag Manager for some of the implementations that I'd done. So I could basically talk about web design and how you know user behavior influences how we can implement tracking on the website. Um, so tying on. that all together. Hold on to your thought. I just want to tell people who are watching because nobody knows what Google Tag Manager is, by the way. <laughs> they should know. It's awesome. <laughs> Google Tag Manager is a platform that is initially very confusing that allows the easy management of all these little pieces of code that you got to put on these websites to track people and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And knowing how to use it is very, very powerful skill set. Um, but anyway, continue. I just wanted to give people a context. So, and I also want to say that tag manager was not something I was familiar with when I accepted the job. It's something that I learned on the job. So anyone can learn it essentially. Um, and so as I was looking for jobs, I saw AdSwerve pop up and I thought, AdSwerve, I've heard that before. And I remember that in one of your walkthroughs, you said, oh, AdSwerve, they're always hiring. You know, they're this big agency. They've got a lot of remote positions. And I went through on their actual um, website for their careers. And I saw that they were hiring for the digital analytics, Google analytics position in a couple of places, remote, fully remote. Um, and a couple were, they were gonna be going back into the office in like Seattle and New York. And I thought, I'm gonna try for the remote one, why not? And where, where do you live by the way? I'm in Missouri. Right on. So what happened when you applied for this, uh, what was you know this position that was of much higher pay? Uh, shockingly, they emailed me, the recruiter, and he said that he wanted to schedule some time to talk. Um, we talked and within, I guess the first 10 or 15 minutes, he said, okay, I've heard all I needed to hear. I'm going to recommend you to talk to the next person who is our senior, uh, digital analyst. And he's actually located in Kansas city, Missouri. And I'm like, what? That was like 10, 15 minutes. And so actually what landed the next opportunity was uh, I was he was asking, how do I use Google Analytics? And I said, I go through the numbers. Um, for example, I said, I go through like search terms and I see, you know, these are the top 10 search terms on the website. And I could never figure out why do people always search for account number and routing number? Like, surely there's something else that's more interesting than this. So I took it upon myself to go to the website. I typed in account number, I typed in careers, and I realized that the search functionality was not returning useful content. Instead of just leaving it there, I wrote up a blurb on, okay, keywords without 
um, our search terms without useful content. I wrote out a document with the content that they should try to create. And I sent it over to the content strategist. He said, okay, my biggest frustration is when I go to websites and user search does not work. Please tell me that your company realizes the value that you provided, not only for them, but their customer. And I said, it's funny that you said that because no, no one cared. <laughs> um, and he said, that's something that we rewarded at Swerve. So that's what happened the very first interview. You gave them that's all. Awesome. So you gave them a specific example of a time where you really took an initiative yes. to to be creative, you know, solve a problem that they didn't even know that they had. Correct. Um, based on your experience, and yes. that's fantastic. And that's that, guys. That's and you know, you, you a lot of you guys ask me. You're gonna as you work on accounts, whether it's a you know when you start out, it's gonna be a small account. Whether it's your, it's your first job, you're gonna have these experiences and these opportunities, and that's what they're looking for. You can see within ten minutes, so just looking for that light bulb, you know, I'm taking action. This is what, this is what I did when I was in my in-house job. You know, I was just, I was just a hustler. I saw stuff that people had ignored and I took care of it and I got promoted. That's all you got to do. Exactly. <laughs> That's yeah. all you got to do is just and have that you attitude. And that in your course nonstop. <laughs> You're like, take the obvious thing and go. So yeah, that's what Absolutely. I did. So then what happened? Then you got an interview with the, the guy who was in Missouri. That's funny too. That's, that's pretty, yeah. So he's about two hours away. Um, and that interview, he said he wasn't concerned at all about, you know, how much I knew about Google Tag Manager, or Google Analytics. He felt like that was something that you can learn on the job. Again, that's something that you teach, right? Like none of this is you come in as this expert. It's always constantly learning and evolving. He was more concerned with my personality and how I approach challenges. So, and, how, and what did he, how did, you know, he, he wanted to, he was concerned. He wanted to know how you approach challenges. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he just, he kind of gave me, he didn't say what the client was, but he gave an example like, okay, we have this account and this account is total chaos. What would be the first thing that you do? And so I gave specific examples and I said, well, for me, if like, for example, if it was a banking client, the first thing I do is somebody who looks at Google Analytics is I will look at the numbers. What's the most visited page? What's the least visited page? Um, as far as SEO, are those pages optimized for the best practices, meta descriptions, title tags, whatever? Because, you know, I know a little bit of the technical SEO. Um, I would look at competitors and I would assess the market. What are they doing that we're not doing? When you look at the web design, what kind of website design do you have? And is it intuitive for the user? And he was like, okay, very rarely do you meet people who think about everything this holistically. Everybody is kind of like in their vacuum. And I was like, yeah, that's one of the things in my current job. You have like email marketing, you have paid ads, you have SEO, and everybody does their thing. And I'm the only person there who's like, okay, all of these things need to work together. So can we start talking? Can we have more communication? And he was like, that's something that we're looking for on the team. How communicative are you? Mm. Guys, this is, this is great. I wouldn't you hire her? I would. <laughs> this is the right attitude to have because you want to know what works you know, and everything has to work out. That's why in my course, I show, you know, I teach people how, you know, as you said, everything works together, paid, organic, analytics, email, it all has to be, if one of those things isn't working, the whole thing doesn't work. And I can right. see in the interview, I'm sure you blew it. Obviously you nailed it. Um, so what happened after the interview? So after that interview, the recruiter followed up again and he was like, Hey, how'd that conversation go? And I'm like, Okay, I don't know. <laughs> of course, I'm like, oh, it was great. You know, I learned a little bit more about AdSwerve and how you all work. And I'm interested in learning more. He was like, great. So now you're going to talk to, you know, such and such, who's the director of analytics. And I'm like, the director of analytics. <laughs> and <laughs> I was... So when he sent the person's name, the first thing I did was go to LinkedIn. And the one thing I do dislike about LinkedIn is like, you know, people can they, they know that you're looking at their profile. Right. But I use that to get a feel of what did each of these people maybe care about. So that's something else you taught in the course. You taught how to do your headline tag, um, something I was not taught in the boot camp. 
you talked about how to structure the about me. You talked about the certifications that you should yeah. get. Well, way, this guys, guy. I just want to, I'm sorry to interrupt. Just hold your thought. We're going to have a whole other part of this interview where Kayla is going to explain how she took um, a <laughs> over $10,000 digital marketing boot camp and did not Don't get... talk about me. <laughs> <laughs> what? Don't talk bad about me. I, I'm a slow learner, but I get there. <laughs> I don't think you're slow. You're going for a PhD in molecular biology. But the point is, my, uh, my course got her the job and this boot camp did not but we'll we'll get into that later you just mentioned boot camp and people might not know what you were talking about so anyway sorry start um what were you saying so i went to the guy's linkedin and i scrolled through and i saw that he had some community college education right you always say that the degrees don't matter but then he had a lot of certifications like LinkedIn learnings and things like this for SEO and PPC and analytics. And I said to myself, ah, he's going to care about those things. Right. So the one thing was I didn't do the Google Analytics, the advanced certification. So that same night I took it. And as far as like the regular beginner intro analytics and the ads and all that, I did that the previous year. At the end of the interview, I guarantee you, he asked me, do you have any certifications? He didn't ask me anything about the boot camp. And I said, right. yeah. And I just list them all off. And he was like, excellent. All right. We'll follow up with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's very, very clever. I think we have to do a whole separate interview about the boot camp thing. But that <laughs> approach that you're talking about is exactly you guys just be smart about this and think about these people you're talking to as human beings, not people you're trying to get a job from. Like when mm -hmm. I, I tell all my students, like when you apply for a job, the other thing you should do is research the company, find out what the company needs, find out what kind of clients they have. If you're going to do a, a sample project, do it about the kind of client they would have. But you've taken it one step further. I actually didn't even mention this in the course, but it's a great idea. Yeah. Research the actual person. You know, I'm not saying like if they, if you see that they like, sailing you make up that you like sailing or something like that but but you got such a great sense of th this guy from his linkedin profile and and that's so amazing because then you got that advanced certification um mm -hmm. very very smart uh so what happened after that this is great <laughs> so after that uh they told me that i would be talking with my you know immediate manager and by then i kind of realized that the tone of the interviews had changed it seemed more like onboarding in the words of one of my mentors and not so much of like interviews after that <laughs> the recruiter followed up and said here's our benefits package just for you to review and I was like okay uh and he said I should be following up with you tomorrow with a little bit more information and what were the benefits now, the benefits, uh, there's a work from home stipend. Um, they were talking about the 401k match. Um, I feel like if you're on site, you get some kind of like food or beverage privileges. I don't quite recall, but it was a really nice package. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, and I was ironically supposed to basically get the offer, right? And then... <laughs> The day the offer should come through, I get an email that says, hey, sorry, uh, we had a shift in our personnel. Um, the guy, the director of analytics that you interviewed with was actually promoted. Oh. <laughs> and the new person that your manager is going to report to wants to chat with you one more time. Oh, okay. <laughs> and this is where it gets really interesting. He asked me one of the very first questions. I see this science stuff on your resume. Can you tell me a little bit about why you left science? And I said, well, this is where I get really real. You work for pennies. Uh, it's kind of a thankless job. <laughs> um, I said, I know people who are now applying for these official like scientist roles and they work way more hours than me. I have amazing work-life balance. I said, no one understands what I do, but I don't really care because I'm happy doing it. Uh, and then he said, well, do you have any questions for me? And I was like, yeah, why do you, why did you care about the science? What's your background? And he said, oh, I'm a marine biologist by training. 
And I also left the field because I didn't want to get paid $16,000 a year to work really hard to be on the cover of Cell. And I was like, oh, my God, I have found my people. Like somebody <laughs> finally understands why I'm not doing that. Right. And he also said, you know, if you were to get fired, like if your coworkers were to come to me and say, you have to fire Kayla right now, what would it be? And I said, it would be <laughs> that I want to know all the things. I said, so, you know, I know a little bit of SEO. I know a little bit of PPC. I know a little bit about blogging and content strategy. I know some Google Analytics. I know JavaScript. I was like, basically, I want to know all the things. If I find a blog, I'm going to Skype it over to you. And I want you to do the same for me. And people may take it as I don't want to do my job or I want to do their job. But really, I just want us to do the best job. And he was like, thank you. Because, you know, in science, it's not quite like that. Everybody holds on to what they know. You uh, but that's awesome. And by the way, that was the great interview answer. That was like, you know, what are your weaknesses? And you're like, well, I'm just I'm a perfectionist. I work too hard. You know, you were like, yeah. my, my, they would fire me because I'm just too, too nerdy and just want to know everything. Which yeah, is a great, essentially. a great answer. You're not like, well, yeah. because I steal from the company. <laughs> <laughs> but it's actually, it's interesting because my, my current boss said that, well, manager said that if she could put me in a bag with our SEO specialist, the SEO specialist is kind of like, you tell her what to do. She does it. And me, if you tell me what to do, I'm kind of like, yeah, but I'm going to remix it a little bit. She's like, I would rather put the both of you in a bag and shake you up and give me the perfect <laughs> worker because you're very like free thinking, creative. You're going to compile right. all these resources. Yeah. And that's that's another great question, guys. For You know, I have people I had somebody write me. She said something like she's really interested in digital marketing, but it's not her dream. Like she hasn't been dreaming about it since she was a kid. And I was like, nobody dreams about any job mm -hmm. since they were a kid, mm -hmm. except maybe, you know. Beyonce or something, you know, um, <laughs> but, you know, you have, this is the real world. You have to work, but in digital marketing, there is this flexibility and this ability to bring creativity and analytics that, you know, in a lot of other jobs, you don't have that freedom. You don't have that mm -hmm. ability. Um, so let's, let's finish the, the journey here. What happened uh, next? After that, they, uh, the recruiter called me. Um, at 5 p.m., I was walking out of the building with my current coworkers, and I was like, silence. Um, and I emailed him, we'll call back in five minutes. <laughs> Get in the car. He offers the job, um, sends over the offer letter. He actually walked me through it as I sat in my car. And he asked me if I had any questions. I was like, no, this is honestly like a dream come true, right? Like I saw you guys. Actually, I told uh, my my new manager about you, Seth, in your channel. Um, I said that I actually found out about digital marketing in April of 2017 or so, and I found AdSwerve through you. And so, to me, like always looking at their company and the jobs that they would post, it was always like that pie in the sky type of thing that I'll one day achieve, right? And they were like, "Well, it's here." <laughs> <laughs> She she wrote your name down too, and she said, "What's what's our dudes? What's our homeboy's name?" And I was like, <laughs> "Seth Jared Himes." <laughs> <laughs> oh well, thank you. Yeah, you're I'm, I'm really happy. I mean, uh, for you. And uh, how did you feel when you got the job offer? You know, when you want to tell people, I told you so. <laughs> That's how I felt. You know, leaving grad school, I think it's kind of like Javier said. My family didn't get it. Uh, I still had a great aunt texting me. She texted me, Happy New Year this year, I think it was. And she said, now go back and finish your PhD. I was like, no, <laughs> I'm not depressed and sad anymore. No. So oh, wow, it's, it's just kind of like, yeah, finally. <laughs> That's awesome, Kayla. And I want to, God, there's so much we could talk about. I'm going to maybe just leave a long form interview up because I'm going to want to get into that too. I mean, you have come from, you know, there's a lot of people who are in majors or degrees or careers they're not happy with. Um, and now you, you have this whole new, you know, career and you, you get to work remotely. You're making more money. It sounds like you really click with that company. It was like, mm -hmm. not only that, you really, really followed that company for a long time. Yeah, That's amazing. Yeah. And, and also I do, I do want to say, uh, highlight something because I, the thing that excited me was um, the fact that you had this flexibility. Um, but 
uh, you told me like you really did like your current the, the job you're leaving. Like you like the people. Yes. Right? Tell me about that. Um, you like that. Jo- I'll just I'll just tell people you, told me, you like the job. It was a good job. You like the people. It wasn't like, mm-hmm. oh, this is a terrible job. I want to leave. But, you know, it wasn't it's paying not paying as much and you didn't have the work from home flexibility. Um, right. Uh, but tell me what happened then. You you uh, told your current manager that you're you're going to be leaving. How did that go? So the funny, well, it's not really funny, but she's actually supposed to be on vacation uh, last week and this week. So it kind of really messed up my day when AdSwerve didn't come through with the job offer on like the day of the Christmas party. And I was actually in a really bad mood. <laughs> it's like, this is not really how I want her to go into her two week vacation. Right. Um, because she is a workaholic. Um, so she's actually been working every day, even though she's supposed to be off. So I sent her an email that said, please open. And it said, hi, manager. I really do not want to tell you this way. Typically, I would do a letter and I would walk it to you and sit down and have a conversation. But I was offered a position and I have accepted it. Now, the crazy thing is. My coworker sits diagonal from me and she was on the phone with her for about 25, 30 minutes. And I could see that she was still online doing things, right? It took her about 15 minutes to call me. And the first thing she said was, what the hell are you doing? (laughs) And I was like, uh, and she's like, "I, I feel I can say that to you. You know, you always call me like a mom. And I'm like, yeah, I'm being bad. And she's like, no shit. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't really want to leave. Um, and I actually asked her like why she didn't do like a counter offer because she knew that the only thing I wanted was essentially to have more flexibility in my work schedule. And she said that that's just not something that the bank did. So. Right. And so it sounds like you had a good relationship with your manager. And of course, and this is another thing, guys. Remember, this is business. It's not personal. So you can like the people, you know, but it's you guys got to be free agents. That's what I love. It. You're a free agent. You're uh, mm-hmm. you're Derek Jeter. Well, not Derek Jeter. He stayed with the Yankees all the time. But, you know, I <laughs> insert, you know, LeBron or something. Like You are a free agent. You are in demand. And so you say, listen, I like you. I liked working with you, but you're not, you're, you know, you're not paying me enough. And that you didn't even need. It sounds like you didn't need. You weren't even pushing for the pay raise. You just wanted to be able to work from home so that you could feel safer and not feel like you might be potentially risking infecting your 90 year old grandma with this virus. Right. <laughs> and yeah. the bank's policy, I won't get into all that, but their policy saying that you're essential, even though you could easily do this job from home, is just really stupid, in my opinion. And yeah. most people with most skill sets are just stuck. They're just stuck. And you weren't. I love it. And I love that yeah. when you described me before, it's like, you got, you say, okay. And anybody, anyone in this field that has these skills, you have that freedom where you, if you have a bad job or you have a bad boss or something, something turns around, maybe you had a great job, but then there's a personnel change and now mm-hmm. the new person isn't working out. Okay, mm-hmm. perfect. Let's try to work it out. Oh, we can't work it out. Great. I'm going to go explore my options. And you're never That's stuck in that. Like, I hate my job thing. The crazy, the crazy thing is, you know, My mom was saying, my mom's 65, and she was like, you need to stay there two to three years. She made me buy furniture and all this stuff. And I was like, I just kind of want to see how it goes, right? And I realized week after week, I love this job. I love my coworkers, whatever. But we had this conversation in November, early November, mid-November, somewhere in there. It was before my mom came to visit me for a week. And I told her about the conversation, and she was like, well, that's just what it is, you know? And I was like no, I'm not doing this again. Like I did this in grad school. I I know I have an in-demand skill, so I'm going to go put out applications. And I told her, I was like, my lease ends December 26th. I'm going to get a job by then. And she was like, that's impossible. And then it happened. (laughs) There you go, guys. You take that attitude mixed with these skills and a lot of cool things can happen. 